Welcome to Rock Hill, the 2014 United States Disc Golf Championships. We're at Winthrop Gold. I'm Jamie Thomas for Spin TV, and today we have a really special guest for you. I've got the first man to ever throw in an ace from across the pond in the distance showcase. I've got Jeremy Colling here. What's going on, Jeremy? Not a whole lot, man. Just uh, ready to watch this front nine and reminisce on a great week at the USDGC. And this, this course is not far from your home, just outside Charlotte. How often do you get out here, and uh, what's what's your take on this course being basically a local? Um, I get out to the course, uh, I'd say at least once every other month. Um, most of my time on the year, I'm spent out on the road, not really back home, but it's nice when I'm back home, um, recharging from the tour a little bit to get down and Winthrop, through, um, refamiliarize myself with the lay of the land, and. Um, it's kind of boring playing the course, to be honest with you, when the ropes aren't up. But once the ropes go up, late September, you start getting that feeling, and it's uh, yeah, it's, it's exciting. It's a whole different monster in the gold layout. It's got to be nice to sleep in your own bed after a tough day at this course, because nobody's shooting lights out like we're used to seeing. You've got some tough rounds all week, and it all comes down to Saturday. You ready to do it? Let's, let's get it. Let's get started. Front nine, here we go. And we're going to start on hole one. Hole one's tricky, and I love it. It's a little, uh, about 250 foot downhill shot. And uh, this year they put some rocks in just uh, in front of the mando tree. to So you can't play that skip route down, but you still want to get it. Yeah, I, I feel like the rocks were more of an aesthetic um, addition to the hole. You really shouldn't be throwing that low. Um, I think that they uh, framed the hole nicely. And, um, you know, basically you still wanted to throw about the same shot. And most of these top pros are going to be using just a nice controlled putter shot. Get it down on the green and give yourself a look for two. And Schustrick there. Oh, I think uh, one of the camera guys uh, from one of the local news crews kind of stepped up into his vision. Messed him up a little bit. Johnny McCray's getting a little wide with this one. This is the uh, position everybody wants to be in last card, USDGC, final card, and uh, just put yourself in a position to win the biggest major championship that we have. So how about this foursome? You've got yeah. your prodigy teammate, Will Schustrick. You've got the undisputed number one golfer on tour right now in Paul McBeth. And then you've got two guys that are masters age and, and playing lights out this weekend. That's, um, that seems to be pretty typical for what you're going to see with a USDGC champion. Um, you know, we, we've, we've had a few young guns win the tournament. Nico Castro, obviously, Will Schuschrick's won it two times um, coming into this event. But the other champions were uh, were old guard. You had Ken Climo, Barry Schultz. That's a tough one there. Yeah, and uh, Johnny McRae is going to hit one off the cage. Schuschrick missed to take a four, and it's definitely not how you want to start this. Patrick gets a little high on the chain. He'll take a birdie. Nice, solid, confident putt. Paul McBeth starting out early with the birdie. He's going to increase his lead to three strokes after one hole with the rest of the field tied at second. Something you'll see a lot this uh, weekend. It's not too much of a spoiler to tell you the lead changes are crazy. You're, ne you're never safe. Uh, there's one thing about this, this tournament you learn is that there's never a time when you have won the tournament. Uh, you, you've won the tournament when you tap out on 18. But until that point, anything can happen on any hole. We'll go right to hole two. Hole two is going to play uh, about 630 feet uh, straight ahead, just over the ridge line. There's a gravel parking lot that plays OB. And uh, so you have to get past that to a kind of peninsula green. And most of these guys attack it with a roller. There's a big tree that fell down a couple years ago. And it's on the left side. You can see the stump over there. And that really opened up the roller route. With the addition of that tree being taken down and the, the leaves and the branches um, getting closer and closer to the ground up towards the gap up top, makes the roller a really good option. Johnny McCray gets a little bit wide and uh, hits the root on that one. And that's the danger of the roller is when you've got terrain that it's different, you've got some mulch, you've got some grass, uh, sometimes you just get an unfortunate bounce there. Will's actually going to take an air shot here, and this is a really nice flex shot. Wow. Yeah, that's going to be where you want. You want to be on the right side um, more than the left. It's a little easier to access. And Johnny McCray is going to have to pull out a, a big upshot here. 
Yeah, that's a good management shot there. He, he realized that after his tee shot, his birdie opportunities were a little bit lessened. So he, he played a nice, safe, aggressive shot, stayed away from out of bounds, and is going to give himself a look. And Paul overworks the Rock 3 a little bit. He's going to be uh, near where John E. is, even though he had a much closer lie off of the tee. And here's Schuster, second shot. And Patrick's going to have a lie just in the middle of the fairway, uh, just to the left of where Schuster was. He's going to get a little bit over on that shot. Do you think it's just the out of bounds that they're worried about? Oh, I, I don't think he really got over too much. I, I think that that's the safe play. If you're going to finish on one side of the basket, you want to finish on the right side. Of the and that's a great birdie for Paul McBeth. Johnny McRae with a very similar putt. Left this one high. Left the last one low, left this one high. Think it's just first round jitters? Yeah, it could be. You know, I, I think that there's definitely a lot of jitters going on. Nice putt from Patty. And there's an easy tap in birdie from Will Schustrick. So we'll go uh, birdie for Will, birdie for Paul, birdie for Patrick, and a par for Johnny McRae. Moving on to hole three, this is a hole that I like to call a four digit separator. I brought the term out in Japan and, and I like to clarify them as, as holes where if your rating is over four digits, you want this birdie. If you're less than, it's a bonus. Yeah, hole three is one of the, uh, the best holes in the course, I feel like. It's just picturesque, it's beautiful, nice downhill shot. Um, for most guys, it's a soft mid-range or a, a full putter shot. And it's just one of the holes that's never really changed in the course because it's pretty much perfect. It's a natural punishment for both left-handed and right-handed uh, because your right-handed fade is going to take you towards the uh, uh, hazard and your left-handed fade is going to take you towards the trees where you may not have a putt for birdie anyway. It's a beautiful shot from Patrick. And Schustrick taking the putter. Begging for it to go forward, he'll also have a look. And Johnny McRae, who really needs to get something going. Johnny's throwing his patented wizard putter shot, something he's been doing for a long time, and he's been doing it really well. A little left to right wind on Johnny's putt. And it looks like it's just coming out low on him. It, it doesn't look like he's getting that release point and extension. Uh, into the chains that we're used to seeing from him. Uh, that's just the nerves. He's he's trying to find his putt right now, and it's way windier than it might even. You can see the flag moving here, but out, out on the course at this time of the day yesterday, it was really pushing. And a lot of players were saying that this is the most wind they've ever seen on this course. And uh, I was noticing in warmups, a lot of guys were having trouble. Uh, dialing in that putt that, that you need to do before a round because of the way the wind is playing with the disc. And yeah, the most important putt um, in these kind of conditions is just the 15, 20 foot or the ones that you have to make. And that's true no matter what level you're playing at. Hole four. I first remember seeing this watching some Clash DVDs from uh, good old Billy Crump many years ago. And this hole is a U-turn basically. You've got to go down, there's a mando to the right, and then you've got uh, a literal U shape of some very, very tall trees guarding the pin. Uh, this is a very tricky par four. With this wind, any sort of turnover shot can get pounded and uh, it, it was a very, very demanding shot in these conditions. And Patrick just shows you right there how to do it. That was picture perfect. That is about where you want to be. He corrected off Paul's mistake. And Schuster's going to go big any on this. This is an aggressive line. This is a very aggressive line. This is a shot that has getting, is getting harder and harder over the years as these trees on the outside are getting bigger. And Will's been doing this play for a long time, and he's had pretty good success with it. And Johnny McRae, also known for being a very aggressive player, Folks, he's going to put another ass, roller so down, the on, and baby. that's working the out on. just fine. Again, this wind right here can help or hurt a roller, and if you lay it down right, uh, actually, yesterday when I was playing with Posse Koivu, he laid one down and made the mandatory and was almost looking at a putt for a second shot. It was really impressive. And this is not a hole that anybody was able to eagle in either division all weekend. And, and this is a hole that 
If you birdie it, you get your picture taken with one of the infamous volunteers and spotters, Mr. Rock Searle. So big shout out to him. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the things you look forward to at USCGC is getting a picture with Rock Searle. It means you did something really special on hole four. And Will uh, had a pretty special roller out of there. That was a tough out. Patrick lays down a forehand that's butter. And here's Johnny McRae. That's a nice roller. He's a little tucked behind that Mando. You're talking about helping and hurting with the roller. Yeah. He had a good result the last time and a tough result this time. This is Paul's third shot. Nice easy forehand pitch to the green. The most underrated forehand on tour, I've heard you say. Yeah, Paul gets it done. He he knows how to match the angle of the disc to the ground that, that he's um, approaching on, and, and that's something that's really difficult with his sidearm. He's not just a hyzer sidearm thrower. He can match angles, which is what separates a, a good sidearm player and a great sidearm player. Uh, high praise coming from arguably the best forehand player in the world. I'll stop. And you saw Johnny McRae with a, a really tough upshot and another nice putt by Patrick Four. Patrick has started off on fire. He has birdied the first four. Every hole he's had to make a decent putt, and he's looked really smooth, really confident. He's off to a great start. And you can see the respect there for fellow competitors. A little fist bump from Johnny McRae and he will tap in for his four. And he knows that he's started off a little shaky, but he still knows when he sees something good, and, and he's out there giving props, and that's what makes John McRae so much fun to play with. And the other thing is, he may have missed his birdie looks, but he hasn't bogeyed, and that's the most important part of Winthrop Gold. Keep it in bounds, don't bogey. Go on to hole five. Maybe the most beautiful hole on the course. One of the best holes there is in, uh, in disc golf, not just on this course. And I really like the uh, the change of the tee pad. You can see the entire hole now. You can pick and choose how much you want to bite off off the tee. And uh, I just really like what they did here. I think it was a, an excellent decision on the, uh, the tournament staff. And it also makes you play more into the wind. On Friday, there was a tailwind. Today, a stiff headwind. As you can see, Patrick and Paul's disc get just ripped over. Um, and, and they're not throwing understable discs. That's a yellow destroyer. and and I, I believe a orange PD from Patrick. So it, Schuster makes a really nice correction and keeps his disc on hyzer right here. It looks like Will's going with an X1 or an overstable D1, and, that, and that's just to play the wind. He, he saw what happened there when they tried to throw their flat shots and they turned over, and he just decided to go with something really overstable. And here is Johnny McRae. He's not scared of wind. No. He just mashes one out there. <laughs> that is a very confident shot for a man who's, who's ready to go on a, on a streak if he can get some things going here. And another tough shot, and that tells you the wind right there, as the cameraman did a terrible job and uh, missed the turnover, and he almost cut rolled back into the water. Well, he's safe, and Green is good at USCGC, so even though he got a, a bit more turn on the disc than he wanted, he's still in bounds. And that is the most important thing on this course as Paul's heading over to the right side. And and not only do you want to stay off the water on the left, but the row of trees to the right can make a, a tricky run up on your lie on your uh, second and third shots. And uh, that's crucial on a par five. One of the things that uh, was really important about the tee shots on this hole is Will was closer to the water, which allowed him to go over the trees with the hyzer, which is the shot he wanted to play into this wind, getting him closer to the water's edge for his third shot, whereas Paul was closer to the trees and he had to throw either a sidearm or a turnover into a headwind, which didn't allow him to get as far up the fairway as he would have liked. And they're not done. Long par five. You, you've got to get to the green around. And, and most of these guys in different wind conditions would play a little closer to the water and, and try to cut the corner. But in the headwind, that makes it more difficult. You see Johnny McRae wrenching it over, heading towards the parking lot, but he will be short of it, so he is safe. That is a huge shot. And Sets him up great for his third. And Schustrick, this is what I was talking about. He wants to take the corner and look at the birdie here. And if you don't get it over the top of those trees there in the corner, that is what's going to happen. You have to solidly commit to going past the basket and coming backwards. And you can see Will right there, he's making the decision to try to take the stroke. Uh, how important, you know, 
tell me about when you have to manage this course, when do you decide when to make a move and when do you just decide to wait? That's a great question, and that's one of the hardest things to decide on the course. That's what makes it so difficult. There's so many spots to play aggressive and to try to attack the birdie, and there's many places where a par is pretty much the same thing as a birdie. Um, you just have to pick and choose those moments, and oh my goodness. Johnny McRae throwing in oh. from a good 300 feet away, careening towards the water. And he's pumped after that one. The crowd well, loves it. That'll get you going. That'll make you forget about those first putts that he was missing. Hey, if you can't make it from short, throw it in from long. Oh my goodness, that was amazing. Whatever you've got to do, and you can see these guys are these guys don't know what to think of that. Leaving those putts just a little bit short. And Will, even though he was out of bounds, he is on the safer side of the basket taking the putt. Just gonna miss. So Pat wasn't in position to go for the basket and at a certain point he decided to play for the six uh, knowing that trying to get too aggressive and playing for a par would probably yield a seven or eight and coming out with a six is okay he started off first four birdies and there you see Paul tapping in for his seven exactly what you're talking about you know Paul wanted to run that and save the par and skipped off the top and in a tailwind, he's going to push it further away from the basket, making a tough headwind putt. Hole six, the beach. Ken Climo's hole here at USDGC. I've seen I've seen that guy on videos park this hole more times than I think anybody else. And it gets a little tougher this year. They've brought the hazard a little closer to the tee. So if you don't get that break over to the left, you're going to be taking an extra stroke. John McCray with a lone birdie on hole five with the tee box here. And that is picture perfect just a low flat screamer just narrowly avoiding the hazard and getting near the beach giving yourself a chance for birdie and at this point the guys are are really close uh, um, Patrick Brown Patrick pure is a very nice shot and Wills needs to get to the left quickly just misses the uh, boundary and he will have a look for birdie And that's not good. Paul's got his a little too flat in this wind. Uh, it looks like it's going right towards the hazard. And he knows it. Not too happy about that. And this is to save par. And these are not the putts you want to have on this course for par. Very scary. Can easily go out of bounds. And looks like he just barely stayed in. Is that flashing the rings right there? That's flashing the rings. You know, some people that might have scooted over the edge and gone out of bounds. But a little world champ love, perhaps. And uh, Schuster couldn't get the U.S. champ love. He just goes off the cage. Johnny McRae, now he's got the putter going. Well, sometimes it all it takes is just one fantastic shot. And even if it didn't go in, just executing the shot the way you want gets that confidence going. And like I said, it's really easy to forget about those first couple putts you miss once you have something like that go your way. So the young guns can't convert on number six. Patrick Brown, Johnny McRae will take the birdies and take the box. Going into hole seven, this is a hole that's changed a lot over the years. Um, you know, sometimes jokingly referred to as the clown's mouth, triple mandatory. Playing into this wind, which will be a right to left, or a slight headwind, it does get a little swirly on this part of the course. Now, what do you attack this with? I personally like to throw a mid-range forehand at it. Um, it's That's been one of my bread and butter shots, but uh, it's this shot is, is I've practiced this hole more than any other hole in the course just because you want to get this birdie you need this birdie and uh, at this point in the course the early part of the course you want to pick up as many birdies as you can because you know things get really tough on the back nine and you can see when the wind is up this hole becomes a little more tricky uh, you can notice on the guy's shirts that the wind just will gust and just work those discs over and Schuster's gonna miss the mandatory there and have to take a drop zone penalty When the wind is up like this, sometimes the best goal is just to aim for that bamboo. I mean, obviously you're trying to hit that gap, but the last thing you want to do... Are you kidding me? Johnny McRae has got it going now. That's three birdies in a row, and I think the closest thing he's had is a 20-foot death putt over the water. Wow. And things can shift, like you're saying, that quickly here at Winthrop Gold, and Johnny McRae is now starting to control his destiny here on the front nine. 
no lead is ever safe. And when you see somebody throw in two shots and three holes, it can get in your head a little bit because he was it was four back after two shots, after two holes, and now all of a sudden he's right back in the mix. Uh, Patrick just keeps it wide. Wanted to match Johnny's uh, enthusiasm for hitting the long shots and just got off the cage. Uh, Paul will tap in for three. Uh, Will's going to take his four. Patrick for three. Johnny McRae on the box going into hole eight. And uh, hole eight's a fun hole. This, this requires a placement shot. This is a par four where you're going to lay up first. Yeah, the, the tee shot is is crucial to stay in bounds and pitch one up. Uh, the tee shot, some people like to go big, but I think the smartest play is just to get one in bounds and then attack on the second shot. And it looks like that's what Johnny's doing here with just a little pitch hyzer. And there's a lot of different options. There's windows to the right, left, and straight ahead. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's no excuse for not laying up and not making it because you got all these options. Patrick decides, never mind, he's going to lace one. Wow. That is an extremely aggressive shot that he just committed to and threw very confidently and will be rewarded with a great placement. Paul's going to opt for the forehand line. It's a little wider than he wanted, and there it is. That's, that's a tap that could be a lot worse. He will stay in bounds. He will have an alley there. He's going to have a longer shot than most, but... He's, he's inbounds. Again, green is good. And like I said, you want to just get one off the tee. You want to be inbounds because this is the shot where you can be aggressive. As you can see, it, it pinches down into a tunnel. And here's an aggressive line from Paul Macbeth. Getting it over. Oh. Roller not working out. Uh, and I think if there's, if there's anything in Paul's game, and far be it from me to critique the guy, but there's a couple times this year on tour where the roller just hasn't worked out for him as he's liked, but so it's amazing that even with that, he still manages to win as much as he does. Uh, just kudos to every other part of his game being as strong as it is. We just saw two terrific shots from Will and Johnny, and all the way up the fairway, probably 80 to 100 feet further than anyone else, is Patrick. Now, who says age takes away distance? You've got these two guys in this lead card that can throw with the best of them. Oh, these guys are athletes, and you keep your body in shape, you'll be able to throw far into your 40s and 50s. And Paul's going to take his mark and do a forehand pitch at it, and he will be the first to putt. It's a good, confident, solid stroke there after a rough start of the hole. It's a nice save for a bogey there from Paul. And that's a, that's a subtle putt. That's a downhill headwind putt, which is a little more tricky than he makes it look. Well, yeah, he makes a lot of putts look really easy that just aren't easy. Will with a nice stroke there. Will's going to take a three. Patrick will take his three. And Johnny McRae should be routine. Yeah, It's not as routine. <laughs> he got it working. Like we're saying, sometimes that one starts and you just on a roll after that. One of, one of the most important things on this course is following up a bogey with a birdie and just canceling the holes out because par is good in this course and that's what Will just did there so that's a big big part of the course for him. See if if Paul Macbeth can uh, back up his bogey with a birdie in hole nine. All of a sudden after a rough putting start for Johnny McRae he's four down on the front and he's uh, tied for the lead in this tournament right now with uh, this guy right here Patrick Brown and all these guys are going to opt for the layup. I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody really bite too much off on this hole. You really want to just be right in that zone where they're landing. Harold Duvall has changed the boundary on this hole to give, your, uh, give the players an option to go for a little bit bigger of a shot. Um, I really like what he did here with this hole change. Um, you can still play the shot that we've been playing for years. Uh, which is the somewhat layup shot to a, a long mid-range or a fairway driver approach. But then you also have this landing zone that you can go big off the tee. And this landing zone isn't any easier after the layup. And Johnny McRae will just stay in bounds. He almost went a little long at the pin. And this, is, this is such an important shot. In the middle of the round, the second shot on this par four can really start to make or break you with a tough back nine coming up. Absolutely. 
Patrick Brown's in a great position here. I'm gonna keep that disc on Heiser. Going towards the basket. That is what you want to see. That's about perfect right there. Let's see if three-time world champion can follow it up. Woo! Can't do it much better than that. This is a big putt for Schustrick, who's uh, no stranger to the spotlight here at Winthrop. Just from, a little bit short. From that distance, I would say in a normal tournament without the wind, that's a bonus putt. In these conditions, in this situation, at this tournament, in this wind, that would have been a super bonus putt, and it's just fine because anything can lift and carry, and just like you saw here with Johnny McRae, now he has a little bit of a tester. Well, and, and you've got to love that, that Will still has the confidence to go for it. He's had his ups and downs on the front nine, but he hasn't lost that uh, that drive and that that aggressive uh, nature. He still wants to get it every single hole. There's a thing, horses for courses is a true thing, and Will Schuster's showing that. He knows his spots, where to be aggressive, where to lay up, and um, that's why he's done well here in the past. We're having Patrick Brown. I don't even think you can call him a dark horse because I don't know if anybody thought he could do what he's done. He's been on the lead card all weekend at 22 down. Johnny McRae's right behind him, one stroke back. Paul McBeth is at 19 and Will's at 18. So it's still anybody's game. Four stroke lead is the biggest we've seen on the lead card so far. Not much has changed, but the names have shifted. Jeremy, thank you so much for stopping by. Definitely appreciate you having you here, all the insight and knowledge you bring. How would you, uh, how would you sum up your season? It's been a great season. It's been a, a breakout season for myself, and um, I've uh, just enjoying every minute of it and going out there and seeing places and experiencing great times with a lot of great people on the tour, and um, look forward to 2015. I know a lot of people were really excited to see you put that last putt in for your first NT win at Vibram. Tell, for all of us that don't know how that feels, what's that first moment like? Uh, it's been a few months since it happened and I still don't have the words to describe it. It's, uh, it's a life-changing moment. It's, a, it's an experience that um, I wish everyone could have for themselves. Um, and it's, it's definitely a moment in my life that I place right up there at the top. You heard it from the man himself. First NT win this season, first person to throw in an ace across the lake at Winthrop Gold in the distance showcase. That's Big Germ, Jeremy Colling. I'm Jamie Thomas. Stay tuned, guys. We've got Paul McBeth, the number one disc golfer on the planet, coming in to show you the back nine. This is Winthrop Gold, USDGC 2014.